would indicate that Dr. Ben, in his concern for the need in the black community for cultural and ideological structures and unity, which is obviously a laudable and uh, uh, praiseworthy uh, goal, then proceeds to redefine Jewish history and biblical history uh, in a way which may be conducive to his political view, but does violence to history. By the way, I have to let the rabbi know I'm much as a Jew as he is, born of a Jewish mother, a Yemenite uh, grandmother, a Yemenite Porikian mother, an uh, Ethiopian Hebrew uh, father, Beta Israel, by the way, they call us Falasha for whatever their reasons. Thus, I am as much a Jew as the rabbi or the grand rabbi in Israel, any of the grand rabbis in Israel. Is the rabbi stating here that in the book of Genesis, there is no mention of the extermination, and I use the word genocide, of the seven tribes of K uh, the Amalekites, the Hittites, the Moabites, the Jebusites? He in his own statement stated that this is ameliorated somewhat in the book of Samuel. Everybody saw that. But the book of Samuel doesn't change the book of, uh, of Genesis. And we remember that Genesis wasn't written first. It was Exodus. It's at the Council of Jamia that they decided to write Genesis. Next, uh, since there is no Jewish race, you know, you have Indian Jews from India, from Kashim Jews look like any Indian. You have uh, ourselves from Ethiopia. By the way, the rabbi wouldn't forget that it says Moses married the daughter of the high priest of Ethiopia or Kush. Uh, uh, being a rabbi, he will know this. Uh, second, uh, more over, about the Bar Mitzvah, and I went through one like the rabbi went through one at around the same period of time. Is the rabbi saying that the Bar Mitzvah is not a commitment to the people? Isn't the Torah demanding? And I don't talk about the Talmud. Talmud is not Torah. The Torah is supposed to have been written by God or passed down although it was, in fact, written at the Sanhedrin, the, the, the theory, the mythology, the allegories that it's written by God or passed down by Moses, again, is a myth. That's Jewish mythology. Because Moses is, de is dead in around 1196 before the Christian era. Whereas the Sanhedrin doesn't release a thing called the Torah until about 700 before the Christian era, which was written from 700 before the Christian era to 500. It took 200 years. Uh, there's a commitment in anybody that any child that's been by mitzvah, and when he's talking about circumcision of women, that is strictly Western, and it has nothing to do with orthodoxy. Uh, using the word orthodoxy to mean something. Uh, there have never been a circumcision. It can't be a circumcision of young of girls. But anyhow, let us continue. Uh, the point is that in the bar mitzvah, it commits the boy. Wait, if you commit yourself to the community, there's a call to return to Israel. There's a call that everyone, every child, I went through it, that you must come back to Israel. If that, if that isn't a fact, the rabbi can say what he wants. His, his position of, or the ADL, position of fear of this, then let's look at the behavior. Uh, it's just like saying today, you know, one time the rabbi, I don't know to, uh, personally, but the ADL and all the other Jewish organization, one time didn't even recognize that we exist as falashas. It is something in America. American Jews have decided that they're going to speak for all Jews, and not only for all Jews. You remember they said blacks and Jews. I could, I'm black and Jewish. You're white and Jewish. You're European. You're of European Jewish uh, ancestry. I'm African Jewish ancestry. No more claim to Israel than I have because there's no Jewish race. Okay, let me continue. The rabbi forget. He says that Abraham, he points to Judaism coming from Abraham. Then I said that the rabbi obviously have not read the Ten Commandments and their source. The ten, Moses is not until about 1346 before the Christian era, 49 years after the death of Amenhotep IV, otherwise known as Akhenaten. Every one of those 12 so-called commandments and uh, that Moses is supposed to have gotten at Mount Sinai. By the way, Mount Sinai is still in Egypt, in Africa. Hasn't gone any place. Now, those Ten Commandments weren't gotten by, by Moses. I, because I'm Jewish, don't mean that I have to listen to, I have to follow the mythology. When you go in any of the major tombs in Egypt, you find those Ten Commandments plus 32 more, otherwise referred to as the negative confession. 
Am I to believe that Moses was born in, 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 in Mizraim, Egypt, about 1346 before the Christian era, went to school there, uh, become a priest, at age 85 or around there, decided that somebody mistreated his people, and that it, it, in every school in Egypt, you had to recite the negative confession, 42 laws, of which they said, I have not killed men or women, I have not stolen this, I have not, every one of the so-called Ten Commandments is already stated that Moses didn't see it. I would like the rabbi to tell me, where does it show that Abraham taught any of this? I would like the rabbi to tell me, before circumcision in Egypt, where did the Jews have circumcision? They said that Abraham's circumcision is part of what made him uh, a Jewish. Then the rabbi must tell me, the worship of the golden calf, which they call the golden calf, is not the worship of Hathor, the goddess Hathor. We could go on down. Uh, but it's rather common knowledge and Jewish practice of uh, uh, centuries uh, that there is a set cycle of the reading of the Torah and the Haftorah, and uh, bar mitzvah children under uh, no circumstances uh, are in a position to pick and choose their Torah portions. Uh, their portions are part of the set calendar uh, prescription of which portions of the Torah progressively are to be read on a given uh, Shabbat, a Saturday morning, uh, so that uh, even on this factual level, there, there's a disturbing lack of accuracy uh, well, that, in, in, in well, the presentation. Wait, now, European Jews don't run Judaism. You don't make Judaism. In the, among the Palashas, among the, the, um, the, 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 the Jews from Kashim Jews, we pick. You see, Judaism will run by you. You don't set the standard for Judaism. So now we're in the process of, of uh, a double standard of, of selection. You have indicated in your transcript that this is what occurs in American synagogues it does too. by indicating uh, that uh, Jewish children make this statement of loyalty to Israel. Yet when I uh, uh, clarify your misstatement about uh, how Torah readings are selected, you tell me, well, there are other practices aside from the Wait, practice now, here, which may indeed be true, one example being the triennial cycle of the reading of the Torah. Right. But then you can't take the American example, and then selectively learn from it uh, something that you choose from the another context. Selects, the, child, the Jewish child doesn't read the entire sermon of the era, of the period. He does select a section within that period. That's all I said. He, the child doesn't read the entire book or the entire thing that is going to be said on that particular Shabbat. The child has a section within it he reads. And there are indeed many synagogues, especially in the Orthodox community, in which the entire section is indeed uh, the entire parasha. So then you admit that there is, there is divergence right. between the Jewish synagogue right here in America? Within the prescripted calendar structure well, of readings. I, all I said is that the child is allowed to pick out. You're saying in the Orthodox, in certain Orthodox, not all, the child must read the entire thing. I'm saying that the child is allowed to pick out a section. What is wrong with that? According to your transcript, and I won't take the time to find the exact words unless it's uh, required, you make a statement that the child may pick out sections and you use the term Isaiah or from whatever. D um, depending on the period of time in which we are. Depending if Isaiah is indeed part of the text. Who said not? Again. I mean, you, you just wrote in, in other words, I said exactly what you're saying, that the child is allowed to pick out that section. Let's say that we are reading the book of Isaiah now. We're reading the book of Hosea. The child is allowed to pick out, out Isaiah a certain section. Or the child is allowed in Hosea if we are reading at that particular time. Because all the children don't meet by Mitzvah in the same month and at the same time. One, should, one, one should be clear, however, that that's partially accurate because part liturgically of what a child is expected to read uh, or participate in, if possible, is the reading from the Torah itself. Indeed, the reading from the Haftorah uh, is a significantly later development precisely because if a child is a bar mitzvah, is a son of the commandments, then one of his first public possible acts is being called up to the public reading of the Torah. Right. And uh, it's by this uh, act that uh, uh, his reaching adulthood uh, is publicly declared. If I may, however, go on to, well, to, to, to what I think. Wait, wait, let's settle this before we move on, and then all I'll right, be happy to let you... because there were some other points oh, that yes, I think we're, should we're be We're going to try uh, to get into all of that. Your response, Dr. Bell? Uh, the point is, everyone, I stated, is adulthood. The question is not, when does he do, do this? If he's a man or a child, because I assume I already stated, the Torah would be similar in essence to the conf uh, to the um, uh, uh, confirmation of the Christians. 
when the child comes of a certain age and take up his manhood, he's, in order to be able to sit in the minion, to sit in the uh, official congregation as a young man, he has to come and go for the bar mitzvah before he could sit in the minion. It, 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 you know? Okay. Now, that, 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 he doesn't deny that. All I'm saying, and what he can't refute, he's, and he's saying about uh, later changes. I don't care what the changes, if it's later or earlier. The fact is that they do it. It's a very curious kind of uh, contextual oversimplification here. On the one hand, uh, Dr. Ben uh, correctly points out certain instances of uh, Egyptian historical input in what we today call uh, the uh, religion of the Hebrews and later Judaism. Uh, and no one can deny the role of uh, cultural and historical context. On the other hand, uh, given it would seem your political need to view all through the African perspective, you completely uh, ignore uh, the experience of the Code of Hammurabi, of the Mesopotamian sources of law, which appear significantly modified in later Torah development. Uh, what I'm suggesting is that, on the one hand, it is a strange scholarly position to argue that historical context must be accounted for in the development of Judaism, which I would accept, and then argue, however, that only that political context, which is useful to your present political view, uh, uh, is to be uh, noted and is acceptable. As I read the transcript, excuse me, as I read the transcript here, uh, there is a, a comment here that, uh, that says, and permit me to paraphrase loosely, that Judaism and all of Judaism and the Jewish people come from Egypt, therefore they are African, uh, and therefore there is a statement later on that uh, many blacks do not understand that they in, are indeed Jews. Now that, raises, uh, now that that raises to us a very curious question, why the constant need to inject a racial quota into a diverse historical context, which we would acknowledge, but yet on the other hand, as we sit here having watched uh, Operation Moses and the uh, ingathering of uh, Ethiopian Jews into Israel, why then the need to define by race as what is essentially authentic in Judaism strikes us as a contradiction that at least can possibly be interpreted in terms of current political context, All but right. certainly not by history. All right. All Dr. right. Ben. I'm glad that you brought that last point, so I work from the, from the last forward or backwards. Isn't it strange that just yesterday that the Jews in America found out that they are black Jews? Isn't it strange also that you don't consider us Jews because when we go to Israel, you're still demanding that we must, quote unquote, reconvert. Who said we converted in the first place? Who said no, uh, what right have European Jews, who don't belong there either, have a right to tell us and to carry us through a shameful... I'm like sorry, that. European Jews who, no, who, who don't, don't have a... No, who don't any more than we do. Because the Russian Jews come there, many of them not circumcised. Many of them never have a, a, a bar mitzvah. And we had to go, nobody asked them to reconvert. We had to go there and a fast call, a re, uh, re, um, uh, um, circumcision, uh, and the, uh, um, you know, I wanted to use the Hebrew word, but at the moment. And we're supposed to go through all that. Next thing, Rabbi, how come my uncle, Tamarat Emanuel, came here in 1935 to raise money when Italy invaded Ethiopia? We were 5 million. When we left, we were 50,000. Well, 50, the Jewish community in America refused, denied that we existed. Up to now in Israel, you have uh, uh, two grand rabbis at least. The Sephardic Grand Rabbi and the Ashkenazi Grand Rabbi, the European Grand Rabbi, that re refused to recognize that we even Jews. Only the Sephardic Grand Rabbi started with Rab uh, Obadiah Yosef when he was the chief rabbi. Now let's come go back. So that it's a farce about Israel telling us to come there for whatever the reason. In that, in that, Israel to this day, from 1947, have in the Knesset a petition for the acceptance of Jews from Ethiopia, the right to return. To this day, it has not been approved. It has still been tabled every, uh, every year. Now, so that you, 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 you try to show the liberality of white American Jews when it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist at all. 
Because if you're saying that you're bringing us back, then we should go back as Jews, not as something that you're going to make us over there. Who gives you the authority to say who is a Jew and who isn't a, isn't a Jew? Uh, you talk about the, the, my, my desire for the political uh, 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 aristocracy, my political sense. Well, it was obvious that no one questions European Jews. Am I to believe that European Jews don't have a white politics here? When blacks move into the white na into the a Jewish neighborhood, white Jewish neighborhood, doesn't the white Jew move like the white Christian? I mean, doesn't the white Jew have white flight to the to the suburb? Now, so as a Jew, are you saying that I should behave as a Jew? Period. In the United States, that means white Jew. In the United States. Uh, and run from the blacks and um, when I come here my acceptance in Judaism isn't the same as when you come when you come if you came you came as a white Jew and the white Jews and you deal with whites now I'm a black Jew isolated from Judaism by virtue of that because of my blackness when I go into a synagogue most synagogue I go into the first thing they ask tell me and I have so I'm Jew when you become Jew did your parents convert when you don't ask a white person walk into the synagogue and say that Go back about the Jews learning the Hanarabi code. When you talk about Hanarabi code, you're talking about 2000 BC, just the other day, historically speaking. The negative, con the concept of one God didn't come from Moses nor Hanarabi. It Akhenaten preached one God before Moses was born. Um, the, 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 the Aaron and about there being African. If you're born in America, you are an American Jew, wouldn't you say? Now. Where was Aaron born? Where was uh, 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 Moses born? And uh, Sarah, uh, uh, Aaron's sister, and, and all of them, uh, um, uh, uh, Miriam. Where were all of this supposed to be happening? Before the Jews come in contact again as a group, not Moses, not Ab uh, uh, Abraham and on and his little uh, family, from Abraham uh, and excluding Joseph, from then on, for according to Torah, for approximately 400 years, everything the Jews learned was in Egypt, everything. Because it, from the time of Joseph, Exodus said, uh, uh, Genesis ends, and Moses died. And there came a time when Moses di uh, 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 um, Joseph died, because of this bad Pharaoh that came, who knew not Joseph. From then on, we are to hear about the plight of the Jewish people and so forth. But before that, from the time of Potiphar, all the way down to the Exodus, isn't it everything the Jew learned was in there? It was no Hanarabi code. Right. And I says the basic foundation of Judaism, one God and all that, came out of Africa. It's, Egypt is still there, not in the Middle East. Again, I, I wouldn't want to deny for a moment that Egypt is part of the cultural mix and therefore Africa as, as uh, you would want to make the political point. But to se selectively uh, ignore all other historical factors to then be able to make a political point uh, uh, is, is not to be dismissed as a cry of anti-Semitism when it's raised, uh, but is to be called for inaccuracy in the historical record. Uh, and one has uh, an absolute right to do that when that inaccuracy then feeds it to contemporary politics. But if I, would like, but, but if wait, I could respond right. to the Ethiopian issue... No, wait, no, because... I've got to answer you that point first. Then you could go to the Ethiopian issue because All that's right. a big issue too. Mm -hmm. uh, you try to uh, throw over that anti-Semitism slipping right there. Mm -hmm. Even when a Jew disagrees with a Jew, it becomes anti-Semitic. By the way, I, I hope that... I, I hope that you, uh, I hope that you would agree that the common statement in America among Jews is that if your mother is Jewish, then you're Jewish. Would you agree to that? According to Jewish law. So okay. And if I make it better, if your father is Jewish and your mother is Jewish, then you're no, ultra-Jewish. Excuse me, one's father has nothing I to said, do with I the said, status I said, of I Jewish added law. that for that, extra measure. Right, but that has no, no I didn't say it does. I, said it, in terms I, I didn't say it does. does. Don't, pick, don't be picky on it. I mean, we're dealing with the issue. I said, well, okay, my mother is, and so that make me yes. Uh, that make me. That. Yes, ma'am. Okay, fine. So then to call me anti-Semitic, as a Jew practicing, went through all the rituals like the lady who probably did on yourself, then it would mean that I strongly disagree with the teachings that what you just stated, for example. Then I said to you, using the Torah itself, on the statement of the Torah that, uh, that Abraham came from the city of Ur, in the nation of Chaldea, which was at the time, since we're using by history, 
ruled by Africans, the, it, a joint army that went all the way to India. Now you said scholars. There's only one scholar that made that remark that I know of, and that's the one from the Stern Institute over there in Lex, uh, Lexington Avenue. Uh, now, secondly, there may be continuation of those scholars coming out of European context. What you fail to understand, Rabbi, is that European Jews are Europeans and think as Europeans and act as Europeans. African Jews, on the other hand, are being asked not to act as Africans and an African Jewish scholar, African scholarship. And thus you're telling me with the scholars. Now let me go. I, All right. Are you finished no. addressing his, his no, the point? last part you of his point. You got more? All right. Last part of his, his point. The period of time in which we're speaking, and unfortunately Torah doesn't give dates, but the period of time in which we're talking about Avram, Avram or Abraham isn't born until around 1775 BCE, before the Christian era. That would put him around the 13th century, a 13th dynasty, Egyptian 13th dynasty, Ethiopian 13th, the, the dynasty of the Nile Valley as a whole, because it's not only Egypt. Egypt is the zenith of a culture that goes way back, because the ancient Egyptians themselves said, we came from the beginning of the Nile where God happy dwell. All of those things, for instance, look, Rabbi, the myth that the Jews built the pyramids. You know that's a myth. Yet it's taught, probably you say it yourself, Koch gets up there and he goes and stands up on the pyramid, Begin gets it up there, and you know pretty well that the last pyramid was built before the birth of the first Jew, Abraham. Now, if I said that, I'll be anti-Semitic. My point is this, that a, 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 a nation that said we don't exist, you know, with the, with the contrition of Israel, the th thousands upon thousands of Israelis li leaving Israel constantly, you need to replenish that, com that, that community. You have an Arab situation, and do, don't deal with me about the third world, because I'm not a member of the third world, I'm a member of the first world. You know, Jinzantipa's voice, he was long before Adam and Eve, and it's found in Africa. Lucy is found in Ethiopia, and it's 3.2 million years. You see, you want me to go along with a dialogue that is, suits you as a European Jew, but doesn't suit me as an African Jew. And you assume that my African Jewishness should supersede my Africanness. No way, Rabbi, because you want it both ways. You want to be a European Jew, benefiting from being a European, benefiting from being a Jew, and that I sat by, sat by and listened to it, and then call it anti-Semitic. You may have difficulty, but the record will show that I sit here as an American Jew. That's right. That will be my and definition of how Jew. you...